All right, folks, good morning. We are here at Paxson Lake Campground. This is a hour or two, a couple hours south of uh, Delta Junction. We're on Highway 4. That's the talk cutoff. And uh, we're down here at the Paxson Lake Campground. It's actually a really nice campground. Um, it's a little bit out here a ways, but it has quite a few uh, amenities, quite a few services. Uh, and then, of course, Paxson Lake itself is actually a beautiful, beautiful lake. Great place to go fishing and an interior place to go fishing. Uh, accessible from Anchorage. Uh, we're about uh, three and a half hours drive from Anchorage so uh, you can get up here in a day no problem uh, and just a really beautiful place so uh, we are here at the beginning of August uh, kind of the height of uh, mosquito season and this place does have mosquitoes so I'll talk about that but if you get nothing else out of this video be ready for mosquitoes there's a lot of them okay but if you are ready for them they are actually uh, uh, not too bad so uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, proceed with that uh, other than that again it's a beautiful lake uh, this place isn't packed, so with all of the services this this uh, campground has, uh, we're not competing with them. There's not a ton of people. Uh, very very private setting, but a very very large campground. So let's get going. All right, joining me today is my daughter Yuki. She'll be walking around with us, and she might have a thing to say here or there. Uh, but again, we're here at the Paxson Lake Campground, and we are, we've already come all the way in. So uh, the the actual driveway in, it's a gravel driveway. It's not too bad, a little bit of potholes here and there, but we're about a mile or two from the Richardson Highway up there, okay? Um, you'll drive in. Uh, nice thing about this place, it has a sanitary dump, and it is actually in good condition with uh, running water for, for flushing. Um, it does not have a water hookup. Okay, uh, it does have a hose here to to flush the, your uh, sanitary dump areas, but of course that's for sanitary dump. Don't don't drink it. They do have a uh, water uh, uh, pump down here. We'll take a look at that. But we're we're sitting right here at the fee station. Okay, and I got the glare on the camera here, so if I'm a little bit off kilter, I uh, apologize. I'm having a hard time seeing my screen. All right, uh, this place does have facilities for a campground host, but there's no campground host right now. We're at beginning of August, no campground host, uh, but they do have the uh, uh, have that in the past. Uh, if, when you first come in, if you go to the right, uh, there is your boat launch for Paxson uh, site. Paxson Lake is, pretty, is a large, large lake. Lots of good uh, fishing. Uh, I imagine some people hunt out of it as well. Um, but uh, it's a, it's an awesome interior fishing lake. And there's your boat launch for that. We're not going down that side um, because it's, uh, that's not what we're here to do. Okay, you'll come in here right past the cap. It'll come back the sand dump, campground host, and then you'll get into your loops. There's uh, pit latrines all over the place. Uh, like I said, there's a, uh, a uh, water uh, station down here in the first loop. Um, be, uh, be advised that the fee station, there's only one fee station, okay, right here at the beginning. So if you come all the way down to this, uh, this more remote loop, uh, and it's just more remote, the, the road is fine, um, but you'll have to come all the way up here to pay. So there's two, la two loops, and what do they have? Uh, 40 sites, okay? Uh, there are uh, pull-through sites. We might look at uh, one or two of those. Um, uh, so if you have a big coach, a big uh, fifth-wheeler, uh, this place can accommodate you. And, of course, the smaller RVs will have no problem as well. They have drinking water restrooms, you know, picnic area. And we'll take a look at some of that. This actually is a pretty big place. Okay, so we're not going to walk everything, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that. Take a look at with, uh, what we can see. Okay. Uh, this is a BLM, Bureau of Land Management site, so federal park rules apply. Um, so you can kind of check out here at, the, uh, at this uh, poster some of the <clears throat> uh, rules for that. Uh, there, there's nothing uh, extravagant about these rules, nothing a lot different than the state rules, um, but there are some uh, rules that are here. So take a look at that. BLM. Uh, one of the main things, if you have a, uh, a senior agency pass or access pass holder, you get a uh, get a bit of a discount, get half off. Uh, you have to come up with some quarters if you want to uh, get it out exactly. Uh, but the nice thing about these sites, um, the BLM sites, is if you do pay a little bit extra, you know, let's say you don't have 50 cents, so you pay eight bucks, or you don't have some extra dollars, so you pay 10 bucks for the night. Um, uh, that extra bit of money stays at this campsite, okay? That doesn't go into one big giant fee uh, fund for everything, and so your your contribution disappears into the uh, big pit of money in the sky. That, uh, that uh, extra bit of money actually stays here with the site to improve the site. Um, so that's kind of cool, knowing that your, your contribution stays. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a walk, and we are going to... Again, we're up here. We're going to walk down this backside of this first loop, take a look at the drinking water, 
cross the bridge and then uh, walk down uh, the first half of the remote loop and then walk down to the lake and that should do it okay again really nice that beautiful day uh, it's been warm here a little bit we've had a wet cool year up to the last few weeks but uh, summer finally got here so it's a little bit warm there are a couple uh, campers down this way so we'll uh, avoid disturbing them too much actually I will uh, let's see right down here so the road goes down here that's one of the pull-through sites so if you've got a big coach a big fifth wheeler um, that, you know right when you come in there's this big pull through that is actually a site site number one um, so again if you if you're bringing ATVs you got a trailer you got a big fifth wheel you got a big coach um, this place will accommodate you okay it's all gravel road but it's actually not too bad <clears throat> We got a, speaking of coaches, we got a coach coming up here. I will uh, also remind you, you are in bear country, so my daughter is carrying our handy dandy bear spray. Of course, if we actually need to use it, she'll give it to me and she'll go running back to camp while I face down Mr. Bruin, because that's my job as papa. Okay, but uh, carry your bear spray. Um, if you're of a mind to carry stronger medicine, then carry stronger medicine. But you are in bear country, we are in moose country. Uh, so just be advised that. Run a clean camp. That is the number one thing you can do to be safe in bear country is run a clean camp. Don't leave your garbage out. Everything else, uh, it helps, you know. Here's another pull-through site. Okay, we'll go, let's walk through this one. Okay, a little pull-through. It's not super long, but it is a site. It is pull-through, so if you've got a longer vehicle... Okay, and then each of these sites has a uh, fire ring, picnic table, and then some of them have a little raised bed here. You can throw up a tent, uh, you know, maybe some kids' toys or something like that. Okay, really basic little site, nothing too complicated about it. Okay, now I wanted to come down here on this side because this is the only water that's available down here is this, uh, this one-armed bandit up here. Okay. You aren't hooking your, your RV hose up to it. Okay, It's just a water pump. You can go ahead and uh, uh, work that thing, get some water out. Let's uh, see what the water looks like. Okay, These things are uh, self-priming, so you d shouldn't have to prime it at all. You don't have to prime it at all. And uh, somebody was getting water out of it earlier. Oh, there we go. Okay, So you got your drinking water coming out the top. Uh, if you have a pet bowl or a thing, keep going, Yuke. Okay. If you want to fill a uh, actual water bottle, you pull up on this little knob here, and you can fill your uh, water bottles or your water buckets. Okay. All right. So it does have water. That's good, Yuke. Thank you. She'll go ahead and get a drink. Tell us what it, does it taste good. Okay. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these pumps, when you get water out of it, uh, it'll be rusty. Might have a little bit of an off-putting smell. It's you know, they say to go ahead and boil it um, or treat it somehow. Uh, this water actually looks pretty good. It doesn't have a rusty uh, tint to it. Uh, it doesn't have an off-putting smell. So uh, this, this water is pretty good. And if you, actually, if you look here, uh, you know, you see the grease uh, that they put on the pump here. There, So somebody's actually taking care of this one. So this is probably one of the better uh, uh, water sites there is. Okay. Uh, here is a little uh, site here, a little fire ring. Now somewhere around in here is supposed to be the path to the bridge. And I'm not sure where that is. Um, so we'll take a look here. It's supposed to be a little, uh, little pathway, a uh, little bridge. Might be over here. I don't want to walk in front of somebody else's uh, uh, camp though. So let's walk down just a little bit to see if we missed it down here. Because there's supposed to be a little trail, a little bridge. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's right next to the water pump. To the right of the water pump. Okay, you got this little uh, footbridge here, foot trail. So we'll walk down here. And this is kind of the footbridge to uh, the other loop, the lower loop. Okay, uh, this, uh, this is a fairly popular campsite. Um, so as you walk around, you might see a few berries here and there, but um, you're obviously competing with other people who know that there's berries here because they're, they're picked pretty clean. So if you're coming up here for berries, you might have to go a little bit further. And then here's our little footbridge. Cute little bridge. Good condition. Good uh, railing to keep the kids. 
take a look here. Now, if you're of a mind to pan some for gold, by all means, give it a shot. But there's not supposed to be any gold up here. Doesn't mean there's not, but uh, uh, you can't bring anything mechanized. No dredges or anything like that. But, uh, you know, if you've got a gold pan, run a gold pan or two. I have not at this site. Uh, but give it a shot if you are so inclined. Now, there's actually quite a few trails at this site, both uh, both close and far. So, you know, if you uh, came here to walk around, you'll be you'll be happy with this site. I will say, and I mentioned it at the intro, that uh, this place has pretty heavy mosquitoes. Okay, so bring a head net, uh, bring your mosquito dope, whatever your go-to mosquito mitigation plan is make sure it's ready to go because if not you're just not going to enjoy yourself okay um there they clouded up pretty good on us last night at dusk and even though we had mosquito dope on and and had our heavier clothes on and everything it was it got bad enough that we went ahead and just called it an evening last night because the mosquitoes were so bad but if you're ready for it there you go all right, we are down here on the lower loop now. Okay, now you can drive down here, obviously. we uh, If you refer back to that map, um, then uh, uh, you'll know that uh, you can you can drive down there as well. But here's the entrance to the lower loop, okay? And these are all one way. And we just popped up right there, a the little water pump across the bridge. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk down here. This is the lower loop. And again, there's no fee station down here, so make sure you pay your fee. Uh, up uh, up at the upper fee station. It's not that bad of a walk. I just walked up here. Okay. Uh, there's no credit card machine or anything like that. Uh, we're doing it old style here. So after you pay your fee, you'll come back to your site and you'll uh, you know put your, your receipt stub here on the on your site number and then you know back in, pull in. And there you go. Okay. Like I said, this place does not have a host, however, the uh, pit latrines are actually in reasonably good shape, and all the pit latrines have a bear-proof uh, trash can. Okay, please use that. Again, you are in pretty good bear country here. You don't need to attract bears. Okay, Yugi, show them how to use the bear-proof trash can. Okay, put your hand in there and lift up, throw your trash in there. All right, go ahead and close it. I guess it smells bad in there. And that's why you put them in there, okay? You put it somewhere else, then the uh, bears also will smell it. And uh, no sense creating a bear bait station in the middle of a park. Okay. And we're just kind of walking this loop. Now, we're traveling through, so we actually didn't uh, do a whole lot here. Okay, but that's not because there's not a whole lot to do. Um, there's tremendous fishing. Uh, interior lake fishing in here and people come here uh, all the time they put in a you know canoe rubber raft whatever and uh, go out on Paxson Lake uh, I I would almost bet that uh, the, uh, the the locals uh, go out there to uh, hunt on the other sides uh, I don't know what the regulations are for this area please look those up all right this little uh, camper here has a warning note on it, that orange warning note. So they've been gone for a couple days. I certainly hope they're okay. But they're probably on the other side, you know, hunting or fishing. You know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll come out to these campgrounds, leave their RV, and then, you know, take a boat or, you know, hike out somewhere to camp for a few days. And so if they haven't paid their fee or... Did some other violation they'll come back to uh one of those orange warnings notes saying hey uh you know whatever you haven't done make sure you do okay and folks see the the price the, the the cost for camping out here isn't very much fifteen dollars 750 if you have an access pass um you know for for a for a safe place to park camp sand dump restrooms you know that's pretty cheap so you know don't uh, don't cheat the system pay your 15 bucks it's only 15 bucks okay I don't know if that's what they're doing maybe they just uh, stayed out longer than they intended okay here's another latrine uh, a set of uh, trash cans here 
Okay, and we are going to walk down to the lake. They have some walk-in campsites down here. So if you uh, come down here and there's uh, you've got some tents, you want to be by the lake, uh, this is where you're going to go. We'll, uh, we'll go take a look at that. All right. Got a little information uh, bulletin here. You can look at the, some of the stuff that's around here. We haven't seen any real wildlife around here yet. Um, there's lots of evidence of moose, but nothing super fresh. So, you know, the moose, it's getting on towards hunting season around uh, here in Alaska. So a lot of the game animals are starting to put some distance between themselves and humans. Okay. Well, it doesn't mean they're not out there. They're just uh, keeping their heads a little bit lower. Don't blame them. Okay, here's one of the tent sites. Number 41 here. So let's just walk down here. So, you know, if you pull up, you park up uh, by the latrine there. And then come back down here and it has a little, just little tent site for you here. You know, fire ring, picnic table. Um, yeah, so kind of nice. Here's a view of the lake. We're going to walk down to it here in a minute, but oh, I don't get to, I don't use this uh, extension thing very much, so I can get really high. Look at that! Isn't that fancy? All right, I'll just get a look around here. So, like I said, interior Alaska, absolutely beautiful. All the mosquitoes are waiting to greet you in this beautiful paradise. Uh, one thing we did find last night, there is not a lot of scroungeable firewood here, okay? Uh, beetle kill hasn't really affected this area, um, so uh, uh, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot on the ground. Um, not even a whole lot of standing dead, really. Well, there's a couple here and there, but you're not supposed to cut down standing dead, so uh, bring your own firewood. Um, you might find somebody else's firewood that they left if you want to scrounge around enough. Um, but generally speaking, uh, you're going to need to bring your own mosquitoes. Uh, <laughs> don't bring your own mosquitoes. Your own firewood. Okay. Uh, this path that down to the lake is moist. So, uh, you know, watch where you're walking. Make sure you're wearing some hiking boots, hiking shoes, whatever. You hear my daughter uh, working their way through. And then this little, little boardwalk. And this is Paxson Lake. It's a very serene little lake. It was actually a little bit windy last night. But this morning, not too bad. It's got a layer of slime on top of it this time of year. If you look close, we'll get down here. Okay, so I can't see the screen very well. Okay, well, it's got a layer of algae uh, close to... Oh, there's a little fish jump. A little tiny one. Okay. Okay, so there is... A layer of algae on it right now it warms up a little bit so you'll have to if you're fishing you're going to want to get out there past that but if you're just coming out here with a canoe a little kayak whatever and what have you just a nice lake okay and again with all the mosquitoes okay. now for you fishermen out there uh heavy algae usually means that the available oxygen is a little bit low because the, ox the algae is taking the oxygen out of the water. Okay. Uh, so, you're going to want to go to a place that doesn't uh, have as much algae on the top. So, uh, go out, uh, uh, go to the other side of the lake, uh, whatever. Yep, there's a little fish or something there. Yeah, it's a little track on the surface. So, you know, there's fish in here. Probably quite a bit. Burbot, grayling, lake trout. All that good stuff. You can see some little, uh, little ones jumping here and there. But you have to get out past the algae. Also, at the height of summer here, what I have found, and maybe other people have found something different, but what I have found is that uh, here in the interior lakes, uh, this is kind of their siesta time of year. They're not feeding heavily. Okay, The bite of winter hasn't reminded them to eat yet. So they're just kind of relaxing. Here's what's waiting for you bug-wise. I don't know if you can see it in the screen, but you can see all of that big cloud of bugs right in front of you. Seriously, don't underestimate the skeeters. Anyway, so uh, I have not had great luck 
uh, at the height of summer here with fishing uh, on the interior lakes. I, you know, there's not zero. You catch a few here and there, but it's not, you know, hand over fist. It's not, you know, high excitement. You have to wait a little bit till there start getting to be a chill in the air. Um, once there's a chill in the air, the fish remember that winter's coming and they start eating and feeding and biting with abandon. So uh, uh, it gets a lot better just another month. Okay, but right now they're just kind of relaxing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. Anything you want to add, Yuki? So much. No, not so much. Just a nice place to stop. Beautiful day. Bring your mosquito dope or you will not be getting out of your RV at all. But if you do, it's a, it's a nice place. Sanitary dump, uh, no electric, of course, trash, uh, pit latrines, just, just a pretty decent place to stay. All right, thank you very much. I'm not even going to put in a uh, summary uh, shoot. I'll just end with a view of the lake. I'll see you next time.